successful people are able to make decisions and move forward with less information than a lot of people that sit on the sidelines trying to get 100% of the information because they're never going to have it. It's never going, the best laid plans are never <laughs> going to be 100% accurate. Hi, I'm Wyatt. And I'm Grace. And you're listening to Our Dad and your host of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. What's up, guys? Welcome to another episode of the Vacation Rental Revolution podcast. I'm your host, Sean Moore, and I'm really, really excited about our episode and interview today. I've got Dan Gorman and his better half, Claudia, who's a little camera shy. We're going we've been, we're gonna to give her a little bit of crap because she's a big part of this entire story. And so Dan's going to make sure that she's filled in. But Dan, I appreciate you joining us. This is going to be a fun conversation today. Yeah, thanks, Sean, for, for having us. And we look forward to sharing our story. Awesome. Awesome. Well, we're going to dive in. And so, you know, these are always my favorite episodes because there's always, you know, I always say success leaves clues and you guys are operating at a very, very high level. And, and you, you started from a very high level. And so it's always very interesting for me. Everybody's path is a little bit different and there's always nuggets of information. There's always nuggets of, you know, just, just gold of saying, okay, how, how did somebody else do this and navigate the, the, the waters of from getting from point A to point B? And so, so I always like to start, though, and we'll dive into and, and as this conversation navigates we'll, through this conversation, we're going to dive into a lot of different details of how you guys were able to really. I mean, our goal, you know, not everybody's goal is to have the number one property in the market. Right. And, you know, that was your goal right from the very beginning. I remember you telling me, hey, I'm going to have the number one property in a pretty major market. We're going to dive into that. But let's go back and talk about really where this all started. You guys were you guys were very successful um, before we even met and do, you know, operating in a different asset class, but a very, you know, kind of a sister asset class in midterm rentals. So I'd love to kind of back into what you guys had going and then what got you interested in the short term rental side. Sure. Well, it's a it's a pretty long story, so I'll try to make it as short as possible. Um, we started in in corporate housing back in, in 2007. I think that's the year that Airbnb um, launched. So yep. we've been doing corporate housing mainly. It's it corporate housing is more B two B, and uh, it's uh, you know it's kind of just selling furnished apartments. Nothing fancy. Just rent an apartment, put some furniture in it. You know, nothing like Vodacy teaches. Um, it's just a place to stay for an interim period of time for corporate travelers. And we've been doing that for, since 2007, still do it today with our main business. And then back in uh, 2016, I noticed uh, a, a gap in our in our service uh, ability or our price point, really. And that was for traveling nurses um, mainly. We so we set out to, to find a property and uh, found a 12 unit apartment building, very run down on uh, Davis Island here in Tampa, close to the hospital. Purchased that, uh, renovated it, <clears throat> and put it on the market. Originally, price point was sixty bucks a night. Um, and I said, "Man, if I can, if we can do this, we can capture uh, a, another another segment of the market." And man, it worked fantastic. Um, we got up to over a hundred dollars a night over the over three or four years. Ended up selling that property um, in. Uh, 2000, what, two years ago now already, man, it's time is flying. So um, once we did that one, we started do, to do others. We purchased another uh, 16 unit building, did the same thing, renovated it, furnished it. It was all midterm stuff. We dabbled in the, the short term. We did put a couple of the apartments in, in both buildings onto Airbnb, you know, minimum two night rentals and stuff like that. But again, we didn't do anything spectacular and just nice furnishings and yeah. you know, nothing again like what Vodacy teaches. Yeah. Um, back in 20... So what led us into to Vodacy really was uh, we purchased a, a home with another family in Park City. Uh, we had been skiing there together for, for three or four years. I'd always thought about uh, buying a property and so we, we did that and, and closed actually the week after the, the ski resort shut down for COVID was, was our closing on that property. And I had to convince our partner that it would be okay. Yeah. That will um, come back up, right? <laughs> and, and, and do it, but it'll be okay. I ran the numbers. We're, we're fine. And the goal with that one was really just 
to break even. That was just a place for us to go ski. We skied at the two most expensive weeks of the year, both of our families together, and we're spending twenty, thirty thousand dollars between us. And you know, if we could make that that house pay for itself, then we come out ahead, right? That's yeah. how a lot of people get into the short term rental space. So, a year after that, <clears throat> um, one of the uh, uh, our part, one of the, our, the the partner said, "Hey, let's let's look at a cabin up in." Um, is it Sevierville where, uh, uh, yeah. Smoky Mountain uh, National Smoky Park area. Yeah. yeah but by there. Yep. Let's buy a cabin up there. And I'm like, Whoa, wait a second. I don't know enough about this to, to, to really venture into another one. Cause that's not a place that I really wanted to go and spend, spend time. It's I'd never right. been there. And so I was like, let me go out and find some education, figure out how to do this thing. And that's when I stumbled on Vodacy. Yeah. And, and, and I remember, you know, that was, that was probably about a year and a half ago, right? Uh, roughly was it, it's probably been close to about a year and a half, I'd say. Yeah, I think, I think so. I th- actually maybe a little longer than that because we closed on. Yeah. Yeah. So January of 22, actually. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So we're, and we're, we're just starting. So, yeah, so we're January. So two years almost, you know, we're January into January. 24 right now. And so, yeah, I was trying to put the timeline together and, and really figure this out. And so it's, it's always interesting because especially coming out of that time period is so many people, Dan, that I talk to are, you know, especially in your guys's position, you have a very, a very successful corporate midterm properties that are set up and on operational. You're, you've got some short term rentals that aren't doing horrible, right? They're doing okay. Um, Mm -hmm. in those nothing that, you know, it, it, like you said, it's not what we're like, how we would create these crazy experiences and have these different types of properties that we talk about, but these properties are producing and they're good investments. And then you bought the lifestyle asset that the goal was to break even and, And we were in a time when, like, again, this was that blip in the market where everything was making a lot of money for a little while. Right. And and you decided at that time instead of and and the reason I'm making a point of this is so many people during that time thought, oh, I know what I'm doing. I already you know, I've got this figured out. And where you decided, hey, I'm going to put the brakes on just for a minute and I'm going to go try to figure this game out so that I can operate at a really high level. If we're going to do this, I'm diving all in, which is your guys I mean, that's your yours and Claudia's M.O. Right. I mean, it's like, hey, if we're going to do it, we're going to be we're going to be the best at it. And and I think it's a really interesting point that a lot of people listening overlook that when you especially because I've I've coached people from all walks of life. I've coached very successful people. I've coached people that are just starting off the very successful people. The biggest thing that gets in their way is their ego of saying, I already know how to do this or I'm already making money and I've already had some success. So I don't need any help. I'm going to I'm just going to go out and do this on my own. And we see them you know, they, they're the ones that actually typically make the biggest mistakes. So it's very interesting. Were you always like that? Did you always have that mm-hmm. when you built things? I mean, cause I, I mean, I know you now for the last couple of years and how you operate, but I mean, you, you're not afraid to just put in the work either, right? It's not like you're, mm-hmm. you're, you'll roll up your sleeves and figure it out as well. But were you always the person that was like, Hey, I'm going to try to figure out s- from somebody who's been a few steps ahead of me. So I don't have to make all these mistakes. It wasn't always like that, Sean, but um, I realized uh, a few years ago I had a, had a coach, a couple of coaches, different things when at certain points in our business that, you know, it, it's, it's time to get some, some other help. So I hired, I hired coaches to, to help me figure some things out. And that's when I really realized that um, the power of, of somebody else coming in and bringing knowledge that you don't have um, advice that can help you is, is worth whatever you're going to pay for it. Um, And in this case, I mean, our investment has paid for itself many times over already, but you know, you, you made it, you made a comment there that that we just jump in and that's actually very far from the truth. It, It seems that way. And even my wife tells me, it seems like you just make a decision and do it. But it, I, I'm very analytical. Mm-hmm. It takes me a lot of time to really go through things and figure things out and make sure that it's going to be a success. Even if I don't know everything that that is going to come, 
you know, I, I spent um, 14 years in the Marine Corps and, and we had a motto that was uh, talked about the 70% solution. I don't know if you've ever heard about that. No. And what that, what that gets at is um, in, the, in the Marines, we, we always plan for a 70% solution because when you get on the battlefield and bullets start flying back at you, whatever you plan for is not going to be yeah. what is in reality. So you have to make adjustments along the way. So a lot of people get into that analysis paralysis phase, right? And, yeah. and I hear you talking to people all the time on, on the calls and, and Bodicey and, and, you know, some of your podcasts, you've talked about that. That's what allows me to move forward is getting to that 70% solution and saying, okay, I don't know it all. I don't have the entire plan, but I have enough yeah. to move forward. Yeah. That's a, it's a, that's two really, really great points that I want to rewind a little bit on one. Like I said, when I say you're, you know, you're, when you guys commit, you're all in, you're all in. Right. But yes. you're, you're exactly right. The preface of that is, is I'm going to do the due diligence on the front end. Like you said, you're going to, you're going to look and make sure that the road you want to run down is the actual road that's going to help you reach your outcome. Right. That's that's right. really, really important for people. I always talk about we have to we have to define our outcome and then we have to choose the vehicle that's going to get us to that outcome very right. carefully. Once you choose, that's when you go all in. But you have to be very careful about the vehicle or the road you're going to run down to achieve that outcome. The second point, which I've never heard, it, it, I didn't know that that was a Marine or a Marine Corps, um, the 70 percent solution, because I've heard many, many times and I'm, I'm my guess is it comes from that is that the amount of information that really successful people need to move forward is never a hundred percent, right? We, the, that analysis paralysis, right? And it comes down to that 70% solution. They, they get enough information to feel like, okay, I've got enough to feel pretty confident that I can run down this road. I don't know all the exact obstacles I'm going to, to come against because I know I'm going to have some, but mm -hmm. I've got enough information that I'm going to run down that road. They, the, the successful people are able to make decisions and move forward with less information than a lot of people that sit on the sidelines trying to get 100% of the information because they're never going to have it. It's never going, yeah. the best laid plans are never <laughs> going to be 100% accurate. And, right. and I, I, I'm, I'm assuming that concept that I've heard for a lot uh, for a long time now is probably came from that Marine Corps um, motto of saying, hey, we, we need to we need yeah. to plan for 70 percent. Yeah, I, I think it, it does. I mean, that's what I was I was taught. I was I was enlisted first and then became an officer and it was even drilled into us even more as an officer. You know, it's um, you, you can't you can't always well, information is going to change, right? Right. No matter where you are, battlefield, um, everyday life, you know, you drive down the street and you get hit by a car. You don't know that that's going to happen, right? right. You, you start building a house and these couple that we just did, we, we built and they were supposed to be done in a, at a certain date and we were hitting targets and had all these things lined up and it changes. Right. So you have to, you have to pivot, but that's, that's really for for me um, and, and everybody around me doesn't really understand that because they think I'm just impulsive because yeah. once I once I say, OK, I'm going to do something like you said, we go all I go all in. Yeah. Um, you know, my wife is there with me, Claudia, 100 percent of the time. She's my partner um, in, in everything that we do. And yeah. we jump in and, and, and go for it. Yeah. And it's it's interesting. I've, I'm very similar to you guys in that same fashion where from the outside looking in, even my dad's like, Sean, I don't I'm not risky. I don't take the risks that you yeah. take. You know, I don't I, I'm not I'm not I'm just more conservative than you are. And I feel like I'm one of the most conservative people around yeah. because I take a lot of time analyzing things before I decide to move forward on. Them. And so it's it's interesting because a lot of people don't see that part. They right. just see the all in I'm moving forward because once we make a decision, we're, we're going to, we're going to run forward. Right. I'm not, I'm, I'm not dabbling in it. I'm, I'm committing. And, yeah. yep. and I think you guys are similar in that fashion. It's, it's very interesting. You bring that point up because from the outside looking in, it looks like, Hey, we're just, you know, we're, we're, we're the riverboat gamblers and we're willing to go all in all the time. And that's not the case that I like, I don't feel like that at all. Yeah. It's, yeah. it's totally not the case. You're absolutely right. Yep. Yeah.
Awesome. So as we, so as you're, you, you started to seek out, okay, I'm, I want some help. Obviously we landed on Vodacy and we were able to have the good fortune of working with you guys and helping you on this journey and building what you guys have built today. Let's dive into kind of the building of that portfolio. How, what, how like let, let's just i mean you're you're on multiple properties at this stage and so let's let's walk through kind of the navigating how we started building that portfolio and what we really wanted to do well we can go back to the okay we're gonna dive all in so yeah. um it was uh it was what january or late january february of 2022 i got the course um i finished the course in you know week and a half two weeks and i'm like okay damn, I'm ready to go. And I started looking at, at properties around Tampa. I was like, okay, you know, we've been managing properties for, for a long time ourselves. So, you know, let's, let's make this an investment um, first, make some money and, and, and then, you know, buy some lifestyle assets in, in some other places, just because this is our backyard. I know we can make some money here in Tampa. So I, I found a, a, actually three lots right next to each other. And, um, did the numbers. I looked at the top property in Tampa. This is right on the river. And I'm like, okay, I, I think we can make this work and, and become the number one property in Tampa because what the number one property in Tampa had is pretty much everything that we have with this house minus a, a few things in the backyard, but they didn't have water. So like, if they can do this, we can do this on this property. So and it also gave us an opportunity to turn our, our, our house that we had built three years prior into an Airbnb because it's in a fantastic part of town. And then for us to build another house next to this one that I'm sitting in right now, you see the fish in the background. Um, and for us to realize our personal dreams of being able to live on the water. Yeah. So I know I sent, sent the analysis to you and probably late February, early March of 2022. Um, you're like, man, this looks good. I'm like, okay, great. Sean says it, it work, it'll work. So <laughs> I'm going to dive in and, and go. Yeah. We ended up uh, going under contract um, uh, on the, on the, the two houses in, in April of, of 2022. Um, and then right after that, some friends of us invited us up to their cabin in, in just North of Asheville um, North Carolina. And before we went up there, I dug in and looked at the surroundings. I was like, okay, I've got Vodacy on my side. Let me, let me see what, what's going on in this area. Cause you know, they use it as a vacation home and, and they rent it out. Lo and behold, there was a couple of cabins on, on the market. So I did the numbers on all of them. Didn't tell anybody, didn't even tell Claudia when we got up there. I just wanted to see what the, what the location was. And it, um, it turned out to be a fantastic spot in Mars Hill, just yeah. north of Asheville. Um, we went and toured um, one of the cabins, put an offer in it. Fortunately, we, like I mentioned, we had just sold a couple of uh, multifamily properties, so we had some cash. We bought it, um, closed on it in a week, and started renovating that one. So you talk about moving fast. Yeah, yeah. We're moving fast. Right after that, we uh, started looking at uh, North Captiva Island down in South Florida, which is an island you can only get there by boat. There's some beautiful houses on it. Um, ended up buying three empty lots there. So did all of that in like six months Yeah, of, of, of signing up for Vodacy. So, so acquiring, I mean, we, we're all of a sudden the portfolio is like, bam, all of a sudden it's not, I don't have a house. I've now got a portfolio that I've got to, I've got to now, now set up, maximize, you know, your, the build jobs, you got some lots, you got some build jobs going on. The Mars Hill property was an existing home, you know, existing cabin that you were going to go in and put your guys' final touches on, do some renovations and, and get it set up. And so that's, um, that's where you like, so all of a sudden you got a lot of irons in the fire. Right. And so so then what is the process? Now the process is, OK, we're going to we're going to hold off on acquisition. Now I've got to get this portfolio operational and maximized. Correct. That's correct. Yeah. So the first one, obviously, we were able to get operational was the existing cabin. Um, it took us uh, it's hard to find contractors because um, it's, it's kind of a remote yeah. area. So it took us a little while to find a contractor to help out. I, I actually went up there two or three times and did a lot of work myself on that property. Um, we got that one 
renovated, furnished uh, photo shoot with with O two O done by December of twenty twenty two. Launched it. Uh, I think we had our we first made it available in the beginning of February last year. So we're coming up on it, the first full twelve months of of uh, availability for for that cabin. So yeah, it's, it's we're gotten right out of the gate. So. Yeah, so tell us a little bit about the launch, but also since we're since we're on the tail end of the twelve month run, mm-hmm. that first year, a lot of times that first year, we're just trying to establish ourselves in the market. We're trying to gain that momentum. We're trying to do different things, make the adjustments that we need to make along the way. So talk to us a little bit about that process from the launch to today of twelve months into that property. Yeah, I mean, that being being the first one that we were actually launching was was very stressful. Um, they're all stressful, yeah. but um, being the first one, following the Vodacy method, uh, you know, we, we were confident it was going to work. And especially once O two O came in and helped us with the the photography, and you know, I think we looked at it a couple of times on one of the calls, and everybody loved it. I was like, okay, good. I think yeah. this is going to work. Um, we got it launched. We're self-managing that that property. We're self-managing all of all of our properties right now. But um, we found a good cleaner, good handyman. So far, it's been it's been great. Um, it you know we for the second month, I think I set up the maximizer uh, uh, system uh, funnel. Yep. And uh, I I had so many bookings, I couldn't I couldn't. Uh, you know, you take any of the requests. Yeah. Yeah. So I kind of shut that off. But um, now a year later, I was just looking at uh, numbers um, yesterday in our segment. Num- we are number four in in the uh, in the uh, in the market and a four bedroom, three bath uh, home in terms of, of revenue. So that's awesome. Congrats. Yeah. That's, that's Congrats. really difficult to pull off year one, especially. I mean, it's, it's, yeah. it's amazing. And, and it goes down to, and, and you're right. That first one that you launch one, you're like, okay, I'm following a process. I feel pretty comfortable that, you know, it's been done before me, but it's your first one. And there's always that question mark of, is this actually going to work? Like, is yeah. it because not everything is perfect, right? There's going to be challenges and there's going to be different things you have to iterate and change along the way, even like spending money on paid ads. And when you get a bunch of inquiries and the calendar's full, right? It's like, what do we do here? Right. Yeah. I'm wasting money on paid ads because it's a good problem. that The calendar's already too full and you've got so many bookings on the launch, but mm-hmm. also you're like, man, how can I, how can I kind of extend this, this marketing out a little bit further? Cause everybody wants the next two weeks or the next three weeks, right? They don't want to book three months out. And we're yeah. and you kind of figure that out in your market. Just so then that's just a, a one little example. I don't know if that actually happened in your market, but typically that's what happens in, with paid ads, you're like, well, I want to, I want to, I want to build that business further out and get booked further out. That's not really how the work it works. And then at a, you know, you're hitting the 12 month mark and you're number four in the market. That's how many properties are in the market. You, you know, off the top of your head around. Um, um, I think, uh, let's see, I took some, I took some notes. So out of 154, four bedrooms in the entire market, we're at number 17 at, the occupancy of, of 10, mm-hmm. we're at number six. I think there's 80 something. There is one thing that can make or break your success with short term rentals, and that's your ability to provide your guests with an amazing night's rest. We're taking all of the guesswork out of selecting the perfect mattress system. Personally, I have these custom mattresses in every one of my short term rentals. We love them so much that we even got them in our own personal homes here in Utah. So visit VodiceySleepSystem.com and use the promo code PODCAST. It's all caps at checkout to get 55% off. Yeah, that's awesome. So you're so well, well, like that top five percent right we're, we're in the top 10 percent to, to five percent year one which is crazy and that's where the money's made right that's why i always tell people if you can get in the top 20 percent is really where the money's made but your guys's goal was to say hey we want to be the top we want to start to set high water marks in our market and then i have no doubt as you roll into because it usually takes 12 to 18 months before right. you really start to hit your stride right it's it's going to be you're really not hitting your stride until that mark so you guys are just coming into your own there and uh and it'll be exciting to watch it for the next that next 12 months because of my guess is you will start to hit those high water marks and so during this 
we're in the middle of build jobs too, right? Yeah. You're dealing with, you're navigating, you're navigating construction. So let's talk a little bit about that. Cause that is not, like you say, the best laid plans on construction uh, never, I mean, they never just seem to go as planned time-wise, budget-wise, everything else. So let's talk a little bit about that as you're navigating, as you're navigating a build job while we're getting this Mars Hill property up and operational. Yeah, it's, you know, it's, trying to keep the builder on, on a schedule. We were trying to hit some certain dates. We, we didn't end up hitting them, but I mean, it, it's okay. And that, you know, that was anticipated that, that we wouldn't, but really towards the end, there was a couple of things that, that really stressed us out. It was our, our house we were living in and converting to a uh, short-term rental. Mm-hmm. We put it on the market. And so we had a date and it, and it started filling up, uh, right away. So we actually had to move out of that house and stay somewhere else. We had three beautiful houses in Tampa and we were, we were out of a home for, for two or three weeks. Um, so that, that really, uh, was, was a stressful end to the situation. It's all worked out. Um, but yeah, navigating construction is, is tough. Um, I, we plan to do it again. As I mentioned, we have three more lots. Um, those are remote. So I don't imagine that we'll be as involved in the construction process as we, as we were here, you know, these houses were only five minutes from our other house. So I was here every day and probably, probably on site too much. (laughs) (laughs) That, that, that's not a bad thing during construction. I don't think. No, I think it, I think it actually helped. I made a good relationship with the builder. Um, I'll probably have them build, um, more houses for us here in Tampa as we built out uh, a portfolio. Great, great builder. But, um, I was able to help them catch some things. I have a construction background as well. And, um, so I think it was a good partnership all in all. And, uh, the products turned out fantastic as, as you can see. Yeah, the, and and those of you that are always listening, we'll we'll I, we always post the property links, and you've definitely got to go check these properties out. So let's talk about the launch. the The launch of these properties, your property on the on the on the water there in Tampa, it's probably. I mean, and we've got in our collective portfolio of Odyssey now uh, almost fifteen hundred homes. It's probably it's probably my top one or two properties that I've seen that I like, I, I always get really excited to go stay at properties. It's on our list. We're going to go stay at this one this year. I'm going to actually bring uh, my extended family because it's a little bit larger. Right. Home. I don't awesome. typically, I don't typically do that, Dan. I don't typically bring <laughs> my family, but it is um, you guys followed the <clears throat> process to a T on this one. And, and I was, it was fun because I saw that, you know, I remember, when we, when you were doing the property, you know, the, the analysis and projections and looking at the plans and looking at the market and, and seeing, and then kind of seeing it from the plans to actually finished product to actually the launch has been really exciting for me. It's one of my, it's, it's probably, you know, I, I say one or two, just because I'm probably forgetting about another favorite, but it's probably right now my favorite property that we have in our portfolio. I love the way this property turned out. Oh, thank you very much. That's, I don't know what to say. Yeah, that's, it's, that's awesome. it, it, it really is. And, and, I, and I encourage anybody that's listening to go to the show notes and check these properties out. But tell me, talk, let's talk about, because both of them are, both of them turned out phenomenal. You know, I, I just, and so both of them are beautiful properties, but let's talk about independently how the launches went on each of these properties. And, and then, you know, and what we're, what kind of what we're expecting and projecting. And I, I would definitely say the one on the waters probably has the potential to be hitting the high water mark in Tampa. I mean, and that's a, that's, that's awesome. Cause that's a major market. Yeah. So, um, I'll talk about the kind of the projections and what I, what I put on paper at the beginning of, of all of this. And, and at first, and you know, our old house is called 1906 Tampa. Um, we, we put a 1000, um, ANR as our, as our budget average, um, 65% occupancy. So that would bring in um, what two hundred and fifty six thousand in, in gross and one hundred and thirty thousand dollars of cash flow profit a yeah. year for that one. Okay. Um, the last three months of that property, we've been at eighty five percent occupancy and just short of the thousand thousand dollars a night. So it, it's already brought in um, almost one hundred thousand dollars in three months. Yeah. That's yeah. awesome. Congrats. Yeah. It's, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. I knew you had a phenomenal launch on that. Yeah. And it, and it's doing 
crazy. I just, I keep going in every week and, and raising the prices yeah. and, um, you know, tinkering with, we use, uh, one of those pricing tools and, you know, it's so easy to go in and, and look at the stats and, yeah. and just tinker with things as, as things fill up, you know, like you teach in, in the, in the, in the course, you know, you can't high occupants, you got to balance that occupancy yes. with. So that's one thing I'm really still learning and trying to figure out is how to balance the, the rate with the occupancy. Whereas in our, in our old business, we needed 90 plus percent occupancy to make, to make money. Um, in this business, you don't. No. So it, it's a very different, and that's probably the, the weakest part of, of where I'm at right now is just that, that balance of really uh, maximizing rate versus occupancy. Yeah. So, and, and it, it, but you're in that launch phase and revenue management is one we want. There's all different things that we're talking, we're that are going through our heads as you're launching this. And we're just kind of just you and I talking almost on a, on a coaching side of it a little bit, that first three months, you know, that launch phase, you should be operating at a higher occupancy. The goal is to get that momentum. We want to train the algorithm that we have a property they make money on. They only make money if our property is booking, right? They right. don't pay that close attention to how much they're making. Like they don't, if you're, they like it better if you're a little bit higher occupancy. Yeah, of course. And, and they, they're going to favor that, right? Then you then all of a sudden you're on the first page and you're getting shown to more people and you've got better exposure. And so you're training that first three to four months. And so I think you're sitting in a really good spot to start to inch those that, that nightly rate up. But you don't want to do it too aggressive too soon because we're still in that phase where we want that algorithm to think this is the property that I want to show to anybody looking in Tampa. Right. And yeah. the only way the, the 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 number one way, not the only way that algorithm is super complicated and there's a lot of things going on. But a lot of people think, oh, if I switch up my pictures and I change the headlines and I am fiddling with my listing, I'm going to get the algorithm is going to boost up in the algorithm. I hear that all the time. No, you 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 want to boost up in the algorithm and get favored by the algorithm. Get your property booked get mm -hmm. somebody to book your property. And so operating at a higher occupancy right now, sure, there's a little bit more wear and tear on the property. You should have, you, you know, our target should be closer to that 60, 65% at a, you know, maybe a 12 or $1,400 a night rate, right? Pushing it up. So, cause there's an inverse, there's an inverse effect to higher prices and occupancy, right? When one goes up, the other one goes down. Correct. And so as you push your price, you're going to push your occupancy down. There's less wear and tear. You make the same amount of money. It's a good thing for an investor. Right. But mm -hmm. in this stage of the game, it's really important to still continue that momentum on the OTAs because that's typical. That's, you know, where most of your bookings are coming in to, <clears throat> or, you know, at this stage in the game is going to be on those OTAs. And when I say OTAs, you guys, I'm talking about Airbnb and Verbal. Correct. Yeah. Yeah. We only have them listed on, on those two um, OTAs right now. So. Yeah, it's. Um, I mean, that property, as far as in terms of, of volume of bookings and occupancy, is is far outpacing um, expectations. Yeah. Um, you know, it's it's just it's in a just a, a sweet spot. It's it's just it's made to entertain. We actually built the house as a as an entertainment venue for ourselves, so it transitioned perfectly to being a short term rental. Yeah, it, it does, and it's and, and the way you set it up. I mean, you guys are very intentional about. I mean, when you guys look at these listings, they're very intentional about the setup phase, the target audience, what they're trying to do, right? It's an entertainment type of a house. You're going to go there and you're going to have a lot of fun, right? The, the way that it's set up, the way that they have done all of their photos and their marketing assets and their way that they're articulating that experience, Dan and Claudia have done exactly to a T late how we lay out this process and that's why that's why they're having such great success it's not just because you had a great property in a great location you're doing an amazing job of articulating what you guys have to offer as well and so it doesn't surprise me at all that you're exceeding your expectations even during the launch year so that that's awesome so so yeah. so that one how how much sooner did that one launch you mentioned that you were misplay or out of place for two or three weeks how much sooner did that one launch than the other property it launched uh, uh, right at a month before okay. the other one. At a month, a month ahead. So how did the launch on the other one go? And let's talk about like, kind of the projections because those projections were done a little while ago, right? They were, yeah. they were done over a year ago. Yeah, they were done when I sent you what, um, April, March of 2022 is when yeah. those projections were done. And I worked happy looking back at that, that, that gross revenue and, and or the, the occupancy 
the A and R's are, are still the same for the top properties, but occupancy has come way down yeah. from 2022, yeah. 2021. Um, so revenue, consequently, revenues come come way down. Yeah. But you know, I still feel confident that uh, you know we can we can hit the numbers and become the number one uh, property with this one. So the numbers that we projected was a twenty five hundred dollar a night A um, uh, and R, which would be five hundred and forty six thousand dollars of gross uh, revenue. Um, at the end of the day, sixty percent occupancy is what we used. Yeah. Uh, that that um, would be $275,000 in cash flow with a 27% cash on cash return. That's awesome. That's awesome. And so, and so that one, we've got about two months in, right? Um, yep. and, and where are we at? How did it launch? Where, what, what's it looking like right now? So for our first three months, um, we have booked $151,000. Uh, actually, that's just 2024. I didn't count December. So just from January 1st to December 31st of this year. So we're looking at a, an annual number. We've got $151,000 of, of bookings um, so far. That's awesome. So you're, you're, I mean, we're, we're, you're way outpacing if you continue on that launch, that launch trajectory, even where even the high water mark of what you projected and those revenues have even come down in the market because of occupancy. So you're still way, way outpacing that. Yeah. It's, if you look at the, you know, the whole year, we're only sitting at 19% occupancy right now. So, yeah. I mean, this is basically break even. This is what our, our nut is to cover the expenses for the rest of the year. Right. And, and, and we're just starting February. <laughs> so, yeah, yeah we're, we're the end of January. So we're, uh, we're, you're sitting in a good position on that one. And, and again, no surprise. It, it's one of those, like, you know, mm -hmm. I can, we can talk about it. And I, I really, really encourage people to go look at these properties and, and see how they're set up. The, the detail that was paid, the, the, you know, the attention to detail that is paid on really mm -hmm. every, every aspect of it. But also at the end of the day, like you said, you're very analytical. Hey, listen, I want to do this and I want it to, I want it to work financially as well. And we're talking mm -hmm. about, you know, talking about hitting a 27% a cash on cash return. That's it's pretty hard to do, but you know, and so it's, uh, it, it, but it takes a lot of diligence. It's not just rolling the dice. It's not just diving into, you know, anything and hoping for the best, right? You guys, you guys are very, I mean, looking <clears throat> at the numbers, two or three different ways. We're looking at them with you trying to say, okay, what are, are the T's crossed are the I's dotted, are the things that we're missing? Um, what are we seeing as well? And so you were very diligent in the very beginning and then you just followed the process, right? You just took it step by step and did every step of the way. And not that there wasn't challenges along the way, not that there's not going to be challenges this year with those properties as much as they're, mm -hmm. as how, how far they're outpacing projections and outpacing the market right now, there will be a couple of times this year that you and I are on the call and saying, Hey, listen, here's what's going on. And let's, let's try to navigate this and figure this out because I had this hiccup, right? Uh, you know, I don't want people to think that there's not hiccups along the way. It's being able to navigate those hiccups with good quality assets and knowing that you put, you put all the pieces in place to be, to be able to, you know, operate at a high level. And, and that gives us the confidence to continue to move forward and roll up our sleeves. Yeah, absolutely. You know, you, you keep talking about process. I talk about process. It's what I was trained to do, yeah. you know, as a Marine is to follow processes and procedures. You establish them. And if you and if you stray from them, from what's tried and true, invariably, you're going to fail Yeah, or not do as well. I shouldn't say fail, but you're not going to do as well as you could unless you followed the process. And you've done a, a fantastic job of putting all of those pieces together. And it's not just what, what your experience, it's all the other people that you've brought in yeah. as part of the, the Vodacy, the Vodacy team. And I, you know, this was the most surprising on, on this property for us with the cabin and our, our other house. Um, Claudia did uh, the, the interior design and she did an amazing job yeah. of doing that. But we used the the courses within Vodacy um, in that process, right? We took the design course, we took all of those courses and used the philosophies in the design of those. With this property, with the goal that we had, we hired um, hired Mike. And I will tell you that uh, I had a big sticker shock when he 
showed me how much it would cost to do this house, to furnish it and, and artwork and stuff like that. Yeah. And it was one thing that, that um, I did not put in the numbers correctly in the, in the projections. Yeah. And I, and we started to, to question we're like, well, we've done a, a, the other two. Should we do this one ourselves? And it just came down to trusting the process, as you say, and um, going for it. And, you know, our very first review, one of the guy, one of the comments was that we spared no expense in this property. And that's absolutely true because, because we didn't, we, we spent way more than what we um, planned on. thought we could spend and get away with it. But I don't think, I don't think if, if we would have, would have maybe tried to save 50 or $70,000 on, on the furnishings that we wouldn't be able to reach our goal. And in the end, you have to weigh what's the cost benefit analysis of doing it the right way versus trying to cut some corners. Yeah, absolutely. And I, and I have no doubt that you're going to get a return on that investment. We we see it on our properties as well. When we when we have a goal of hitting the number one property, the highest nightly rate in the market, we've got to give the we've got to we've got to deliver, right? And we've got to give the the consumer a reason to pay more. And like you said, the getting those comments of it, you know, no expense was spared. No, it wasn't. And, but they also are not looking for budget properties as well when they're shopping for your property. Right. And not that any of those other two are, by, are budget by any stretch. I mean, they, they turned out phenomenal as well. And it was probably a really good decision to do those the way that you did. Right. Cause we do have, we do have the design course and setting it up it, taught by Mike, right. Our, our designers and, and the, photo the photography course, all those different things to be able to, to, if you want to go do that, it's just when you bring a professional to do it versus us following a course, there's the results going to be a bit different, right? And there are times for both of them. And there are times where you're going to get a return on that investment both ways. And you look at it and it is, it's a very interesting decision because especially when you've had success doing it, where, I mean, Claudia does a phenomenal job on design, right? You wouldn't know that that it wasn't put together by a designer, right? Frankly. And so, you know, there, there are some people that we, we just don't have a design eye. And sometimes you put a property together, you're like, hey, you, you should have hired a designer, right? But yeah. Claudia does a really good job with the design. And and so it's it's interesting you bring that point up because you've had success with her doing it. The property's turned out phenomenal. You've got a track record of them looking really great at the end of the day. And then to still say, hey, listen, we're going to even try to raise the bar again. And again, again, this is a question mark. You're like, is this going to be worth it? Is it going to give me that return on investment of spending an extra fifty to seventy thousand dollars? And because those are big dollars, that, that's a big dollar amount, right? And so, um, again, kind of having that the faith that hey, I, I feel confident that the numbers are there, the market is going to pay for that. Because that's another way you make those decisions, right, Dan? If if yeah. you're looking at the numbers and you're saying, hey, listen the the top of the market is not going to be that much different than the mid scale or the upscale and you might make a different decision right the the upside might not be as great as trying to raise the bar at the very top of that market because sometimes markets do the mar the money's just not there right there there's money being spent but the night nobody's spending twenty five hundred dollars a night for example if if the if the market was saying hey people are spending $1,500 a night on this property, not $2,500 a night. And, and we don't have a track record of that. You would make different decisions. And I think you make decisions that way. And that's why I bring that up is you're looking at the overall, do I actually have the potential to capture more money by doing and making these types of decisions? Yeah, absolutely. I mean, this, the, all of this is, is, is all about that. It's about decisions and which way you go. And, you know, go back to the beginning of our conversation. When, once you make a decision, you gotta you gotta just do it, and, and that's the, that's why these properties are are successful. You know, we've we've followed the process. We've we've put the work in. Um, it's not easy. None of this is easy. Yeah. A um, lot of stress, but um, it works. It the the system works. The process works. We're very proud of the the products that we've that we've put out. We've we started to create a brand now we call it Luke's legacy vacations, which is, you know, a very high luxury product that we're, we're bringing to the yep. market. And, you know, so we'll continue to expand the portfolio. And, but you want to, one of the thing I, I would like to, to say to, to everybody is, you know, I, I, people 
a lot of my friends are, are like, how do you guys do this? And, and it's like, well, you know, we, we are looking for something that's fulfilling and this is enjoyable. And I know a lot of your podcasts, you talk to people that, you know, they love what they, what they're doing. And, and, uh, you know, the, the passion from you is, is certainly there. Um, we are very passionate about providing a top notch quality to, to, to people because when we travel, that's what we look for. Yeah. And that's really what got us to into this, this avatar, you know, that whole other business I was talking about was, is one bedroom and two bedroom apartments. There's nothing glorious or glamorous about them. You can put, put two people or four people in it. Yeah. And <laughs> you know, when you travel with two families or three families, you want something nice. And uh, there's a lot of people that can afford to pay a lot of money out there for, for these types of, of properties. And there just aren't enough of them. That's another reason, actually, why we went to this level. Mm -hmm. when I did the market analysis on Tampa. I was like, okay, there's a handful of competitors yeah. at this area. In our one and two bedroom, there's hundreds. Actually, there was probably about 1,200 competitors in the one and two bedroom space. So I'm like, well, I'm going to go where there's less competition. It yeah. might cost a little bit more in the beginning, but the ROI is going to be much greater. So 100 percent. And I think that, again, you're looking for those opportunities within different markets and and you hit right on the head, like why I love vacation rentals. Right. They're fun. Right. They're just it's a it, that's why I say they are lifestyle assets and they bring you. And we talked a lot about process and we talked a lot about what we do at Vodacy and kind of the blueprint that we've laid out. But I always tell people the most valuable thing that we have is a community of members just like you guys. Right. What you like. I see Claudia, you and Claudia at a lot of our live events, a lot of what we like, we get together now this year, we're getting together every single month, right? We used to do a couple times a year. Now we're doing it every month. And you guys, you, you make sure that you're there and, and we meet new people and we're, we rub shoulders and we talk and, you know, we mastermind and, and those are, you know, because again, it's, it's really fun to be around other people in this game. And because you, it, you know, we, I mean, I didn't add up the exact numbers, but just on the portfolio that you built right now, you've got passive income mm -hmm. this year is going to be close to 300 grand in passive income net, you know, not gross net. Right. You, you know, and, and that's a, that's a big deal. Right. And people, we say people, you know, there's, yeah. it's not, I don't want to say it's easy, but the process is fairly simple if you really want to play the game. Right. And, and you can, you, you have the opportunity to surround yourself with people that are, a couple steps ahead of you, which is really, really fun. And that's why I always say, I mean, that's, that's why I love what we do. That's why I'm so passionate about it is just the people that we get to surround ourselves with and meet and, and watch and, and see the success that they're having and the fun that they're having. Like, like you mentioned, this is a, it's, it's fun. It's a, it's a different type of a business, but also pay some nice bills, right? You know, it's, it's fun to have a portfolio that's, you know, that, that is, is creating multiple six figures a year in passive income. And, and you mentioned as you build that portfolio, kind of the next step. So let's talk a little bit about that is building the brand and cross promoting. And then all of a sudden, you know, you, you really start to expand the, the income potential and the business side of it and everything else. Right. It is. And that's kind of the conversations that we're starting to have now is, OK, how do we now build the brand? cross promote this portfolio? Because, you know, you when you have a really solid brand, somebody that stays in one property is going to be interested in the other property. So we start cross promoting and all of a sudden that flywheel starts to spin even a, a little bit faster and faster every single time you add properties. Yeah, that's, that's going to be the, the big challenge because I think, you know, um, and I, and I think it, there's an opportunity for, for you and Vodacy to, to really embrace this, this kind of, it seems like there's more and more um, Vodacy members that are, that are doing the self-management thing, even though that's not what you guys really teach. Yep. But it is possible. It's very possible to do. And, there, and there's people that can be very good at it. We're good at it. There's other people in the, in, the, in the program that are good at it. So, you know, how do you build those, those brands and the marketing behind it and, and all of those types of things? You know, one thing that's really exciting for, for Claudia and I is, is our daughter is a senior in, in high school this year, getting ready to graduate. And she's um, going to come straight into the business. So she's going to take over um, management. She's going to take some, some courses, um, some certificate courses in, in um, from some colleges that uh, give her targeted education, like finance, real estate finance and, and marketing 
hospitality, stuff like that, where she can come in and um, help run the business and, and really take over operations and then take the business to another level. Yeah. And um, provides her immediate income and, you know, she'll be an investor and a shareholder in the, in the business as well. So that's awesome. That's, that's really exciting to us. I really can't wait to. And, and by the way, she's already done the Vodacy course. Yeah. A couple that's, that's awesome. I <laughs> love it. Yep. 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 So she's, she's rare and ready to go and, and uh, it's going to be awesome. That's awesome. And you know this, you know, but, but those of you listening, that's one I, I always get so excited. I've been investing in real estate for 24 years now. It's my 24th year in it. And I've never been involved in an asset class that families do together. And, yeah. and it is really fun how many family legacy businesses have been started when I watch people build these portfolios like this and bringing the kids in and, and getting them involved and they have there, it's enjoyable. They're learning a lot. And, and then all of a sudden they're able to be a part of the business. It's, it's just a fun thing all the way around for me to watch and uh, excited to see her, her dive in and, uh, and really start to take it to the, like you said, take it to the next level. Let's raise the bar and let's, <clears throat> let's hit those, ne those, those next levels of, you know, building the portfolio. Cause we're really in the infant stages of, and I, um, one of our, I was actually talking to another one of our members about this. We're really in the infant stages of, of actually building these portfolios that are now recognized as a mainstream asset class and yes. um, where even institutional buyers are going to be interested in them when they can, when they can come in and say, okay, I'm, I'm interested. So there is actually probably fairly significant exit strategies that really have not been explored in the past because it's, it's such a new kind of mainstream asset. And, and it's, it's very interesting as people build it for that, you know, maybe you never, maybe you never exit, but you always build businesses to exit because if yeah. you own a business to exit, it's, it's a better business in my opinion. And <clears throat> as we build these portfolios, I actually think there's going to be a marketplace for yeah. these types of portfolios that you're building. And it's fun to be kind of on the pioneering stage of that because I've been investing in short-term rentals since 2006. Like mm -hmm. you said, when you guys launched your midterm corporate side, it was in 2007, right when Airbnb was coming around. That was way before, like I started before Airbnb and we've seen these the, this asset class mature. I think the next maturity level is going to be these mm -hmm. portfolios, these branded portfolios that people are starting to build. And they're few and far between right now, frankly, because yeah. people are just kind of getting to that stage. But I think that that's going to be the next level that we that we're going to start to see within this asset class. And it's pretty exciting to see. Like, and I know that you guys have thought about that as well, right? And um, yeah, and we've got a number of members that are really eyeing that, and it's exciting because I think we're going to be some of the, we're going to see some of these portfolios be some of the first ones that are going to be. You know, I mean, if they start selling for a multiple of EBITDA, I mean, that's like just like other businesses and other portfolios sell. That's a pretty significant financial windfall that you have that option if you ever want it down the line. Well, yeah, it's interesting you say that the two the two buildings that we sold, we we sold them as multiples of, of you know, on how real estate multifamily is typically evaluated. They used our numbers which yeah. gave us a much higher value than, you know, an, an, an unfurnished mm -hmm. rental. So we've already proven it, that it, that it works and there's big money coming into to that midterm space. So I, I don't think it's very far behind that there's going to be institutional buyers that are looking at, at portfolios. Um, it doesn't seem like there's a lot of individually owned portfolios. We're seeing it more and more in the Odyssey yeah. community now, but yeah. um, you know, seems to be more single two or three yeah but you put put together a portfolio of five or six in a market or even across a, a region yes. i think it's very powerful yeah i, I totally agree so it, it's going to be exciting to watch that as well i know you're excited to see that and watch that and so we'll we'll uh as things progress and move forward so dan we're we're kind of running at the end of our our episode i always like to ask you know if you and claudia like looking back going back um you know that in saying hey could i give myself a piece of advice before i dove in right you guys are very calculated with everything that you do and so you know you you probably maybe you wouldn't change anything but i always like to know you know are, are there lessons along the way that you would like to pass on to somebody that might not be you know might be thinking about diving in might be thinking about you know, is this the right move for me? And what are some of the things that you would say, Hey, if I could go back and just have that in the back of my head, this is what I would be thinking about. Um, 
It's a good, good question, and I should have been prepared for this because I knew you were going to ask it. But um, I think what I would say to other people, and, and I say to other people all the time, is that you don't have to do what we've done. You just have to get started. Yeah. And if you get started, you'll understand the, the process. The process is there. Follow it. Don't let it scare you. Um, it's there's a there's a whole support community inside Vodacy to help. And everybody is very willing to help. I'm willing to help. Yeah. Um, just get going. And a couple of people have t- taken that advice and have joined Vodacy and are doing it on on their own now. And, and I'm able to help along the way. So, you know, like you said, I we jumped right in um, once I figured out that the this was the education that I needed to move forward. Yeah. Um, and I would say, you know, also don't be afraid that you don't know it all. Yeah. You know, seek advice, seek help. Um, don't be afraid to ask a question. You get into a jam, somebody's going to be able to, to help you. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great piece of advice. And exactly. Don't don't compare and say, hey, listen, I, I'm not quite financially where Dan and Claudia were to build that type of a portfolio. You don't have to have that type of a portfolio, right? Yeah. You can you can start with a completely different looking portfolio yeah. and have just as much success. And it's it's a matter of just getting the ball moving forward and starting from where you're at, the resources you have available, figuring out how to leverage those resources to the next step. And then the next step. And like you said, don't, you know, we all suck in the very beginning when we try anything new. You don't have to have all the answers. You don't have to be an expert. You know, there are people that are willing to help. Just like Dan said, I, I don't know how many, you know, phone calls and Zoom calls and, and comments you made in our community helping people, you know, the next step. And, and you know, there's hundreds and hundreds of dance in our community. Right there. And, and, and even outside of our community you know, in other communities and other people doing similar things, there are people that are willing to help. And so just make sure that, you know, you you, you seek that out and the ego doesn't get in the way where, or your, or your fear or insecurity doesn't get in the way to say, I'm not going to ask the questions. And so re- really great piece of advice. And we all start somewhere, right? We all have to start somewhere. We, we just have to evaluate what resources do we have and how can we leverage them to get to the next step? So on that, we'll wrap it up, Dan. We're going to tell Claudia we missed her. And, uh, yeah, we and so we're, uh, I, I love and appreciate you sharing your story. These are my favorite episodes and just walking through and having these conversations about the path uh, that people are navigating in the short-term rental world. And so those of you listening, we always appreciate your time. We know how valuable it is, and it, it does mean a lot that you spend it with us. At the end of every episode, I always ask you two favors. The first one is, if you got any value out of the show, share it with somebody. If you know somebody that is getting into the game that would get value as well, we'd love you to share it. If you have more than 30 seconds, like, leave us a review on whatever platform you're listening or watching to us th- this episode on. And so that, you know, we can spread the message and those things do help us on those platforms and so and the final thing and i think is the most important thing that you can do is to go pick that one thing you can do today start building that life you don't want to take a vacation from cheers my friends thanks for joining us on this episode of the vacation rental revolution podcast share this with other people you think need to hear about it and don't forget to subscribe and leave us a review hey grace is there a website yes For more amazing content and expert advice, visit bodicey.com. Thanks for listening, and we'll see you on the next episode.